or that uh you know a kid from a broken home you know can't go on to do you know g- great things or that just because they have are two parents they might of be the better of off that come from single parents no i'm saying are that's what aware? it sounds like to me that's what i'm that's what i'm saying to are you are you aware of the outcomes of children who come from single parents at home are you aware that there okay. are plenty of children that come from single make, parent homes like myself make, that go on to college and have degrees and are successful now dr johnson i gave you the opportunity to talk and i did not interrupt not you but you won't you won't let me finish my statements here without spitting off at your degrees and your social mother. idealism and that's not, not that doesn't have a, have a doesn't healthy exchange oh, how many oh, black oh. children are raised by one parent it is not healthy okay. I, I don't I have a question I don't know if it, you know if they're comfortable with this one but oh, you, 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 yeah. I want what what is what is your what is your take on on, on brother polite? Is, is there is there is there is there, a, is there a, a beef between you two, or you just guys just don't? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't really beef with nobody. You know, to be honest with you, I mean, it's been people in the conscious community who have made disrespectful, um, insulting videos assassinating my character. Brother polite right. was one of them. You know, uh, but that happened some time ago. I don't hold grudges with anybody. So me personally, I don't have anything against the guy. I would just ask of anybody in the conscious community, if you ain't got something positive to say about me, just keep my name out your mouth. Okay. You know, not only him, Boyce Watkins, there's been other people who, you know, from time to time have to mention me in a negative light. So my thing is, I never mentioned y'all. I never made a video about y'all. Don't mention me. Don't make a video about me. You know, I'm not going to attack who you are and what you're doing. So there's no need to attack me and what I'm doing. But the reason why they do that is because, you know, within the black conscious movement and not just the black consciousness, within, you know, the black community in general. You know, I'm one of the most popular scholars. I'm definitely the most requested scholar. You know, so there's, you know, there's that, that competition that sometimes can exist between brothers. There's animosities, you know, and petty jealousies that can be there. And I guess that's why people mention my name because sometimes they can get more views and more attention mentioning me than mentioning themselves. And that's why they do that. But again, you know, I haven't heard of him, you know, saying anything against me for quite some time. So I don't I don't have nothing against the brother. I wish him well with his work. I wish all the brothers out there well with their work, but just stay in your lane. I'm in my lane. I don't go in nobody else's lane. Just stay in your lane. I mean, all of us have our own gifts. We need to find our gifts and use it the best way we can to help our people. I'm on that perspective. We don't need to be fighting with each other over who's the top person and who's not the top person. God chooses your position and the people confirm it. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I mean, I, I really didn't think it was anything, you know. No, nah, I ain't got heavy. no beef. I mean, normally gotcha. when somebody mentioned me, you know, I clap back at them, you know, verbally, say what I got to say, and I just move on from it, you know. But I, I've learned that because of my stature, mm-hmm. you know, I'm an international personality. Most of these guys are local, but I'm international, so I got to be very careful because people watch me all over the place. When I get into something with somebody, I'll get emails from government officials from Africa. You know, I'll get emails from elders from Europe and elders from Jamaica, and you know, so I gotta be very careful. You know, I probably have the largest youth following of any scholar, uh, probably one of the largest youth followings of any scholar in recent history for that matter. I have a lot of people under the age of 21 who follow my work. I just got a text from a kid from Manchester, England today, 12 years old. He WhatsApp me, a young kid who met me the last time I was there, I was keynote speaker for the 70th anniversary of the 5th Pan-African Conference, which took place in Manchester, England. So I keynoted that, I think it was last October, or the October before last, and I met a 12-year-old kid. Well, that 12-year-old kid, finally, after a year or two, sent me a WhatsApp message today and said, Dr. Umar, how are you coming with the school? I hope the school comes. My mom plans on sending me there, yada, yada, yada. So I have to be very careful of how I conduct myself. I recently had a situation with a brother, and I didn't really respond to that situation in the way that people would have expected Dr. Umar Johnson to. So in 2017, you know, I've committed myself to trying to always put the best foot forward and show our young people how they should handle conflicts within the community. Because I'm going to get more attacks because I'm too successful. So I'm going to get more attacks. You know, more of them are going to come. And I, but I do have to show a better way of handling that conflict because we got enough brothers killing brothers on the street. Of course, we're not going to engage in that behavior. But killing each other verbally isn't too much better than killing each other physically. Amen. I was, you know what? I was just about to chime in and say that because of current situations that are occurring in society now in which we 
constantly and, and it's so ironic that you even mentioned that because as we constantly mention how the system is definitely you know played against us and, and it's and it's caused for us to 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 be in a position in which we're, we're downtrodden to a certain extent um it's just ironic that you know jerome can go out here and shoot clay either over a pair of shoes or or a corner or a chick and yet we're a minority so you know the irony is you know we're we're supposed to be together we're supposed to band together we're supposed to you know clinch that mighty fist against a common foe but we're out here killing each other you know we're out here degrading each other on youtube and saying certain things about each other and you know even in our own dialogue you know we we, we yes, tend sir. to we we yes, tend sir. to become very um we tend to edify ourselves and stuff and we forget that you know a lot of times you know it, it's these people that are watching us that are listening to us that are following yes. us um that helped us get to where we are so when we show out and we we we, we put ourselves in that position it's an insult to them if you know what i mean oh i agree i agree okay. with you i agree with you Amen, amen. I I got I have two more questions, and we're about we got about ten more minutes left. Really, like eight. Sure. Um. Okay. This is from Anthony Welch. He wants to know: um, Are you going to debate with Sarah? Uh, now, excuse me if I pronounced his name wrong. Sarah Sudden Sadai. Or okay. Uh, or are you going to build with one another? Nah, we may build with each other, but there will be no debate. Um. You know, that's that's behind us now. That was 2016. It's the new year, 2017. So I'm moving forward in positive energy. But one thing I am going to do, and if there's anyone listening to your show who would like to be a part of this, they can let me know. I will be hosting a first annual International Black Consciousness Convention. And it's probably going to be held in New York City. First annual International Black Consciousness Convention where everybody who's into black consciousness, knowledge of ourselves, improving our people, can come together in politics, and engage one another and strategize and begin to build the reality that we need. Because one thing about the black consciousness movement, and of course, you know, I kind of supersede that and I deal with the whole black community, not just the black conscious community, but there's a lot of contradictions in black consciousness. And I would say the biggest contradiction within black consciousness today is that we largely operate just like the church that we claim is at the center of the problems that face black people. I mean, when you hear a lot of brothers and sisters in the conscious community, they condemn the church. They say the church got our people brainwashed, the church is taking out people's money, but how are we any better? I mean, if the pastor is pimping people by using the Bible, okay, then how is the conscious community any different if you're pimping, pimping people by using black history? I mean, at the end of the day, we don't have any solutions in place, nor does the church have any solutions in place. So how can you condemn an institution that you're actually imitating? You guys? Uh, I'm going to remember this interview, and I'm going to remember this interview not only because I think it was a good one, and I think it started kind of testy, but it ended up extremely positive. It's the last interview that I that I'm doing under the Barack Obama administration. So <laughs> if you guys right. need to make a mark of this, I'm gonna make a no. I'm serious. This is this this is, this is a story. to some extent it's, it's historical and it's very relevant for me in my personal history because until you said that I didn't even realize it but this is the last radio interview that I'll do under the Obama administration so I won't forget this night well I'm, gl I'm glad you shared it shared it with us certainly indeed and and please send me a link so I can uh, put it on um, promote it on my social network pages and let everybody know that this was Dr. Umar's last interview of the Obama administration we'll I'm do. sure we'll it's do. going to be uh, widely listened to for no other reason than that but of course it was a great dialogue as well I would I would